Good morning. Welcome to this brief service of prayer and scripture reading coming to you from the Anglican Cathedral Church of All Saints located in Halifax, Nova Scotia on Thursday, February 2nd. My name is Fred. I am one of the many retired priests associated with this cathedral. This Sunday past was the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany and today we celebrate the presentation of our Lord Jesus Christ in the temple. Let us gather ourselves together in quietness, in openness to God's call, with listening hearts and minds. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of his people Israel. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for you have sent us your salvation. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit to recognize him who is the glory of Israel and the light for all nations. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 84, verses 1 through 7. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. The Gospel reading is a portion of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 through 35. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. 
Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. The Gospel of Christ. I've pared down the Gospel reading to highlight the two oracles or prophecies of Simeon spoken as he holds the infant Jesus in his arms. I read now from a translation prepared by the biblical scholar Raymond Brown. The first prophecy, prophecy is addressed to God. Mighty Master, now you may let your servant depart in peace, since you have kept your word. For my eyes have seen this salvation that you made ready in the sight of all the peoples, a light to be a revelation to the Gentiles and to be glory for your people Israel. The second prophecy is addressed to Mary. Behold, the one I hold in my arms is set for the fall and rise of many in Israel and for a sign to be contradicted. Indeed, a sword will pass through your own soul so that the inmost thoughts of many may be revealed. Simeon can now depart this life in hope and peace because he has seen the prophet, the promised Messiah and salvation for his people Israel, but also for the nations, the Gentiles, the others. He sees also that the Messiah and salvation will bring division and conflict, the way the world may be until the consummation of history. At once, salvation and division, in the world, among nations and peoples, among cities, towns and villages, among neighbors, among families, within families, even within each of us, division and conflict. Because of its brevity and words of hope, Simeon's first prophecy, often called the Nunc Dimittis, is beloved and used in services of evening prayer and was probably used in the early church at the time of the death of a believer, the time of death of a member of the community of Christ. Just as in our day, a beautiful prayer for use at eventide is often recited at the funeral of a member of the community of Christ, a prayer I will offer in concluding words of this service. Hope of salvation and peace and the experience of division and conflict abide, as Simeon prophesied. But within these remains, tr remains trust in the way of Christ, the way of the one Simeon held in his arms. And trust in his way is what we call faith, and faith gives birth to hope, and hope and faith give birth to love, which is the path of salvation and peace, even in the midst of division and conflict. We can, as Psalm 84 suggests, as we journey on our pilgrim way, go through the desolate valley of division and conflict 
and find it a place of springs, a place of health and healing, if formed and shaped by trust in the way of Christ, find not only our peace, but the peace we hope and seek for all peoples and nations. Let us pray. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray now as Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> 